Mr. Ollie, I have a tale to tell you. Um, tell me the tale. I'll tell you the tale. I was playing here this very spot on uh, Sunday afternoon, a couple of days ago, and um, two gentlemen came up to me, as you just did, and these were very well spoken, like yourself, very erudite gentlemen, knew a lot about music. And they were here in Westport for the Chamber Music Festival. It was the last day of it, I think. And um, anyway, they kidnapped me. And they took me off to have a coffee. And they said, right, we're going to a lecture in the town hall. There was a lecture on how to make up words. Well, come along with us. And I was intrigued, which I'd heard in the, I'd never seen an oboe, but I'd heard in the past that the oboe reed is very similar to the Ulam pipe. I'd heard yeah. this many times. And um, so I went along with them. And we went in, and there's a wonderful oboe player, Nick something or other, a very funny man, very, very well educated, knew a lot about music, it was great. So he gave a talk for about an hour, you know, and then he asked me questions, a few questions. And so I very timidly raised my hand at the end and said, but could you tell him, is it true that the oboe reed is the same as the Irish Bill and Bible? And he said, I don't know, I'd have to see one. I said, it just so happens, I have one here with me in the yeah. room, you know, I have seven of them. <laughs> And uh, well, let's have a look. So I got the chant right, you know, went up to the front and uh, took the reed out, showed it to me. To show, I'll show you what I got it. Uh, everybody can see a little pipe reed. I'd be very careful because they cost a fortune. <laughs> so, They're delicate, are they? Oh, yeah. yeah. But that's the Ullum pipe. Right? Oh, okay, yeah. The, that's the, it. It's a double reed, you see that? Oh, yeah. Very difficult to make. And the, the oval reed is the same, it's small. Now, the difference is the oval reed, they're playing it in their mouth. Yeah. So it's only the only last about four or five weeks. So if you get a good hybrid, and it's difficult, well, they can last for many, many years. It's a dry reed, it's not mm. blowing. I think that's right. So anyway, went through all this, you know. So I was very pleased to find this out, and I enjoyed his talk. I was putting my, my pipes away, putting the chanter away in the bag. And um, then people started, well, play us a tune while you're here, you know. Yeah, okay. Well, I was a bit shy, you know, I'd never played any classical music, really. Mm. And. Uh, can't read music or anything. And, um, but they insisted, so you know, I, I blew up the bag with my bellows here. And I thought, what am I, what am I going to play? I'll play an old carol with you. But I thought, oh, I, do, I do know one classical piece. It's a modern one written by Sean Davy of Dublin. It's called The Brendan Voyage. It comes out great on the planet. Liam O'Flynn used to do it. The Brendan Voyage. And it uh, evokes from Brendan's journey across the Atlantic in the 8th century, you know? Yeah. So I thought, I'll play that. It's an easy one to play. Very visual, it's a class, classical music. So your man, he immediately gets the oboe, and brilliant as he was, I mean, he just joined it immediately. He was yeah. able to play it straight away, you know, without having hearing it before. And so I played that, and at the end I went into two jigs. And you could also follow those, it was great. Yeah. It was so spontaneous, you know. And so unlike, I'm sure, the rest of the festival, it was very spontaneous. And um, and in the end, actually, uh, people, were, people were delighted with it. And, uh, and one, one lady came up and said, I've made a video, I'll send it to you. She did send it to me. I don't normally like to see videos of myself, actually, because I feel so embarrassed, Dr. <laughs> Ollie, you embarrassed me with your cameras. <laughs> you and anyway, so I think I actually played the last note <laughs> in the Westport Chamber Music Festival. Good man, well done, well done. It was a postscript. And I was thinking, because I've just been invited a few days ago, I'm off tomorrow to go to Salamanca in Spain. Now, yeah. you may know Salamanca is where the Irish college is. And then for that's right, yeah. years. Yeah. And that's where the priests and monks used to go to learn, to be trained in the Catholic Church for 500 years. I think to within living memory. And now it's a sort of, they call it the Irish College, the Colegio Irlandes. And I've been invited to go there as well to play a few tunes. Good. So I'm off there to play a few tunes for the next Saturday or something. So play a little tune for me now. Oh, well. <laughs> the Brendan Voyage. All right. Well, not the whole lot of it now. No, not all of it. The Brendan Voyage is a lovely one, will you? Yeah, yeah. You have to imagine the oboe, of course. Yeah. Sorry, keep you waiting. Here we go. So you see the reed is a dry reed, not spitting into it. And yeah, thank yeah, God, yeah. because it cost a fortune. It's hard, <laughs> hard to make. Who makes them? There are, there are a few people who make them. Or can was, you buy them? You can buy them. Buy them I, mean, yeah. I can't make them myself. Most pipers can make them. Yeah. But I'm really a guitarist, it's the more of a pipe, yeah. so I can't make them. And when I was a kid, I gave up on the pipes twice because I couldn't get a reed for love and the money. Because I grew up in England, you see. And even here, you couldn't get a, a reed. Yeah. The pipes almost disappeared, you know, almost on the way of the heart. Yeah, yeah. But a few heroes like uh, you know, uh, Seamus Ennis and others kept it just barely alive. And now there are lots of people who make reeds, so you can buy them. But not, not in the shop. So, the Brendan Boys, this is what I play. <laughs>